It's Friday, January 20th, and I am finally canning up this chicken broth that I've been working on for a couple of days. And I wanted to show you a couple of things that I do that uh, that I think helps make it a better product. I know a lot of people use cheesecloth and all kinds of other stuff, but I've discovered that just plain old paper towels works for me, and I don't have to do the laundry of it afterwards. So let me show you what I've got here. The thing I did is I put my uh, colander and lined it with, a, with paper towels. And then I started, and this is a pot that's been soaking for a long time, or, or simmering for a long time, and I dumped it into it, and it's straining through the paper towels into this pot. So I've got a, a relatively clear uh, thing here. And now with my hot jars here, I also, I've got a, I've got kind of a double thing going here. I've got the thing that helps the, the metal part that helps a, a funnel, and then I've got another funnel on top of that so that my paper towel doesn't fall through. And then I take... A measuring cup and then just kind of slowly pour it through the paper towel and I use and I cut a little section about a fourth of a paper towel for uh, for each jar and then just change it out with each jar. See, there was a little bit of a particle that I'd missed with the first filtering. So this is going to be nice and uh, clear and pretty whenever I get it done. Okay, now you also see that I've left some head space here. That's important. We'll let that sit back in there. I've already got my water because uh, for the um, um, a pressure cooker for a canner, it's a it's a deep one. It's a good one for quartz and stuff. I've already got the water going on it because there's so much water in it that it takes a long time to heat up, even with my nice gas uh, range here. Uh, so we got we got the water heating up, and then I'm going to start uh, lidding my jars and uh, adding some more to them and. Uh, then we can get them into the canner. Okay, I got the last of the broth from my big pan poured through. There's a little bit left in there, but mainly that's just bones and celery and cooked out onions and stuff like that. I will let that cool. I know it's chicken bones, but it's been cooking for two or three days. Those bones are soft, and my dogs love them. And it's and it's got nutrients in there that they can use too. And here's my uh, first time strange chicken broth, the rest of it. And so I'm going to finish getting this all jarred up. And, and uh, I've got two jars into here already. And I'll get, uh, I'm hopefully four more into a total of six that will fit into this. Okay, this is the last jar. It's not quite full. And I consider putting it in, put a lid on it and put it in the refrigerator. But I think it's full enough to go ahead and stick in here. My water is getting pretty hot. So I'm, Ooh, I hope this fits. I usually only have five. I did a little extra. There it goes, I think. All right, there it is. So I've got six jars in here, and I'm going to put the lid on. I'll show you that in a moment. And uh, the water's getting warm in it, and let's 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 get it to go. Okay, I don't know if you can see this right here. I got this canner from my mother, and she had trouble telling which one was open and which one was closed. So now what we're going to do is we set this. And it's just a little bit offsetting here, if you can see that. And now we're going to squeeze it close. And you can see now the uh, these are lined up. And this is sealed. Back here in the back is where we're going to watch for steam here after a while. We got but the water has to start boiling good. And uh, we're, we're going to watch for steam. And once it starts steaming good, then we'll put the little weight on it. But right now... We're just going to wait for the water to boil and, and uh, get good and hot. Another thing I wanted to show you, this is the weight that goes on it. And what I wanted to show you in advance was this little top here screws up and down. And if it's screwed all the way down, essentially what's going on is that the, the, the steam goes up into it. But there's really no place for it to come out. There might be some come out these side holes and stuff. But you kind of want to set it how you want to do it. And I just back it off a couple of turns. And that way we can allow some steam... Because we want pressure, but we don't want, we, we also need to be able to uh, keep it, the pressure uh, under control. 
sometimes it's hard to determine you can turn the as the pressure gets high you can turn the heat like all the way down and almost off and it's still your pressure is a little high so it takes a little bit of uh of working with it a little bit I, I try to get it done before i put it on there because steam is extremely hot and i don't want to be turning this thing while while the steam is coming through it so i back it off a couple of turns that gives me a little bit of a, a leeway on uh uh temperature of the act of, of the water you know how uh how high the the flame is underneath it and and how it helps you keep control of of the steam coming off the top okay i don't know if you can see it or not but you can, there there is uh some steam coming back and uh you want to make sure that it's doing it for a while to get all the air out of it and stuff so uh you want to do it for about 10 minutes or so uh, just for your information, it's been at least half an hour, probably about 40 minutes since I put these jars and shut it up before they started doing this. So now we're going to put that, the weight on it, and we're going to start keeping an eye on the gauge here. And what we want is I need to keep it for 30 minutes above 10 pounds, okay? And, uh, we'll have to see how that goes and, and, uh, keep an eye on it. Okay, now I do want to say, though, even though it was about 40 minutes, we have to keep in mind, I am in a camper that is a propane stove, and it's a pretty good propane stove, but you may have you may have uh, shorter results for yours than I do mine. Uh, I don't know how long it takes for electric uh, stoves to get, get things up to temperature like that, and I'm sure a good gas stove wouldn't take nearly as long, but right now with my propane stove in a camper, it took about 40 minutes after shutting it uh, off or uh, shutting the lid, putting the lid on it, shutting it down, that it got up to where it was steaming. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes since I put the um, thing on there, the, the weight. And as you can see, the pressure starting to build. It's just right at about 3 pounds right now. We want to get up to 10 pounds. Uh, it is taking a while. I get the feeling it's because it looks like I need a new seal because I'm seeing occasionally steam se uh, seeping out the sides and stuff. But at least we're getting it going and... Uh, so we're going to try to get up to 10 pounds, and then uh, then it needs to be above 10 pounds for at least 30 minutes. Okay, as you can see, we did finally get it up to above uh, 10 pounds. Um, I probably I probably should have loosened the that top a little bit more because if you look down here, I've just barely got the heat on, and so but it's still it's not it's not the pressure's not getting any higher. And it's already been going for 25 minutes, so I've only got about five more minutes before I can actually just turn the heat off. And at that time, I'll show you what to do, and we'll we'll get it done. Okay, we've got it's been 30 minutes, saying these have been stayed above the 10 pound uh, mark for the 30 minutes, and now we're going to uh, take the pressure off. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the heat off, and then I'm going to take this uh, the weight off, and it's going to release the steam. And we're just going to let it release steam until it's done, until the, you didn't, until the gauge goes all the way down to zero. Do not open this until it gets down to zero and it's done hissing. We're going to let it blow, it off, blow off and then we'll come back to it. I am now joined by my granddaughter Kenzie and she's going to film me while I take the lid off of this. Okay. Now, as you can see, the gauge is down to zero. We don't hear it hissing anymore, but it is still extremely hot. So we're going to take this and just like we're going to go in reverse like what we did when we put it on. We're going to slip this to the side until it comes loose. When you open it, open it away from you so the steam can escape in the other direction and not towards you. It is going to drip water. And you can see the water's even still boiling inside of there. And we're going to try to get these jars out and let them cool. Lift it up, tilt it a little bit to the side. Do this very carefully. You don't want to smack them around because they are so hot they will shatter. You can already hear them trying to seal. <coughs> Is Kenzie 
coughs into the camera. Yeah. And when did you put it in there? Six. We've got six of them in here. Look. Oh. It sounded like two pop that time. They pop multiple times. Oh. Um. It's different than whenever you do it with a hot water bath. These will pop repeatedly. And every once in a while you leave them, you can even catch them bubbling inside of the jar. Cool. Okay, we're going to leave, leave those and we're going to let those mm. cool overnight. When, that one, when this one... When this one popped right here. That one, it went, it like the. It bubbled. It, yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah. Cool. So Kenzie might, might might film it a little bit, doing some more bubbling. But we're going to keep, we're going to let these cool overnight, not touch them. But now we've got six quarts of beautiful chicken broth that I can use in soups and and uh, sauces and all that other stuff. Okay.